Hey, good morning, everybody. It's middle of December here in Maine, getting cold. We've got a 60 by 30 garage we're doing today. Comes all the way out to here. It's part of a car dealership that sits way over there. This guy's gonna just park some cars in here, I guess. But we're gonna get going 60 by 30. Got about 23 yards coming and 3,500 air. Accelerator, it's got hot water in it. Uh, Mid-range water reducer, so we can pour. We can pull about a seven slump. Here we go. Hey everybody, Mike here. So we show up today, it's a Thursday, to get this job done. It's a 60 by 30 garage, just a flat floor, pretty simple and basic as far as we're concerned. Um, the guys that we're working for, the foundation guys, showed up this morning. They threw some wire down over the top of the, there's actually radiant heat in there. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but if you look close, you can see the tubes in there. So the wire's on top of the radiant, which is actually helping hold the wire up off the bottom that's why we don't have to lift it at all plus we got fiber mesh in the concrete too the the owner was quite concerned about not having any cracks and although we can't guarantee them it won't crack you know putting the fiber in it putting the wire in it and then saw cutting the contraction joints the same day right after we get done troweling today will really go a long ways in helping minimize any cracks you know the key is this is the middle of december now in maine and really the key is making sure that there's no frost in the sub base before you lay that styrofoam on it so and that's really not up to us that's up to the general contractor to you know to keep an eye on the, the guys that do that the guys that do the excavation the guys that lay the styrofoam um, that's really up to them and then they give us the okay whether or not they want us to do it or not so you know we got the okay that's why we're here today it's actually you know we've got a couple of days with above above normal temperatures the day before this it rained so the temps got up into the mid mid to high 40s and then today it's going to be nice and dry the sun's actually going to be coming out here shortly but it's actually going to hit almost 50 today so they got you know a couple of days of pretty decent weather for us to do this now all our jobs we still have a ton of jobs like this to do outside right here in maine and the hard part is like once December rolls around, like everybody's pushing to get their job done. They got to get it done before things freeze up, before we get some snow or freezing rain or, you know, something that's going to delay the job even more. So the the building crew, you know, w wants to show up here and start building, start framing, putting lumber up. And obviously, if they get the if they get the radiant tubes in here on the styrofoam, and we don't get the floor poured then it's just going to make a mess for the builder to get in here and try to start framing on top of that stuff without damaging it. So it's a big push, a lot of stress, a um, lot, of, lot of high pressure to get things done. And, you know, the biggest variable is just not being able to control the weather. Like, you don't know what it's going to do. Even, even a little bit of freezing rain on top of this styrofoam and radiant heat would mess this job up. You know, if it freezes and rain a little bit the night before, we can't come in and just pour on ice. Um, and the same with snow. I mean, if you get if you get an inch of snow, a dusting of snow or an inch of snow on top of this, we're not just going to come in and pour concrete on top of that. So, a lot, a lot of things can go wrong this time of year, which which increases the stress level and increases the pressure to get it done. Um, it's just it's it's it happens every year. We've been working around it for 40 years and. Nothing's ever changed. It's always the same. And there's going to be some jobs on the list that we just don't get to. You know, if, if we get a, if it snows six inches tomorrow and all these jobs are right outside and they're not protected or anything like that, then, I mean, that's pretty much going to put the, the halt on that job until they get some framing up and they can heat it and melt, make sure there's no snow or ice in the sub base or anything like that. So that's what we deal with a lot. Now what we're doing right now is we're just screeding our, our wet pads in the concrete. So we always use a laser level to set our interior grades. And this one, this one's pretty easy because we're just matching the top of the concrete wall around the perimeter. So we set our laser level to that. Then I use a grade stick with the receiver on it 
and I mag float out a pad in the middle and just and just keep checking it until it it uh, rings perfect. If it's a little high or if it's a little low, I just fix it until it's perfect. And it, the receiver has like a steady beep on it when it's right at the exact height. And then we'll use those little little pads I make with a mag to strike off like this to give us something to go by with the power screed. Um, right now we're just using the 14 foot hand screed to get around this pipe while we got it right in our hands already. We do a lot of hand screeding like this too. That's how we were taught. I mean, that's how I was taught when I was 15 years old. So this, you know, it's, this isn't necessarily all that hard for us. But when we get something flat like this, nice and flat, and we can pour a decent slump using water reducer in the mix, definitely easier to use the vibra screed like this. That thing's got a 12 foot board on it, and it's probably, all in all, it's probably around 35 pounds or so. So it, it's really not too bad to screed with. You can see how nice and flat that gets it, and I've talked about this in some of my other videos. It also makes bow floating a heck of a lot easier because it vibrates a little bit of paste up to the surface, kind of settles the aggregate. And usually when we bow float, you know, we only have to go down and back once and then we can set over and, and keep going. So it makes bow floating pretty fast. Right now, just there's Darren right there. Darren was, uh, he was gonna go over and finish screeding around some pipes over there on a very small area. And we're waiting for that second truck to back in too. He's kind of backing in off to the left. You can see his chute right there right now. Oh, there's Luke over there screeding. So Darren's getting the second truck mixed up. And I'm over there bull floating. You can see the sun's starting to come up now. So it's getting up to around 7.15, 7.30 in the morning. All right, truck number one. We'll get the... That had, that had nine yards on it. This one's got eight. Get the truck number two here. got high range water reducers today so we can pour it pretty loose that helps us a lot you know if the slump looks kind of loose it's it's because we use water reducer we use it every single day and a lot of that is because there's only three of us most of the time so with a crew of three and you pour concrete flat work every single day you know you don't want to wear yourself out pulling around stiff concrete so the, the it, some some people call it super P. We usually just call it water reducer, either high range, mid range, or low range. Um, most ready mix companies that I know of have it, and you can just ask for that if you want. They charge you a little bit extra per yard, but you can pour nice and loose. I think we're up to around a seven or eight slump right here with this, but it's got really hot water in it too, so it's a really warm mix today. You can actually feel the warmth right on your boots through the rubber. And the warmth in the concrete, go, along with the water reducer, the accelerator, and pouring on the styrofoam makes for a, a really good concrete mix in the winter, a really good winter mix for setting up fast. So it's even though it looks kind of loose to start with here, it's going to set up really quick on you. And it probably, I mean, if this is a 8 or 9 yard load, I think. I think we had a 9, an 8, and then a 6 on this one. Um, you probably have 20 or 30 minutes to play with it, get it, get it pulled around, get it screeded, get it both loaded before you really start feeling it setting up and it starts making things difficult. But we pour, you know, when you, like I said, when we pour every single day, especially in the hot summer months, we'll have, we'll have temperatures that get 100 degrees with high humidity, which makes it almost unbearable <laughs> and really hard to breathe you know so pouring a loose slump like this in the summertime makes pouring a lot easier in those conditions and then pouring in the winter when temps are you know 20 25 degrees and i'm talking fahrenheit so 32 degrees is freezing so anything below 32 you're pouring outside in the freezing cold weather so you really need stuff to set up quick. So you gotta just know your mix designs a little bit and what type of additives you can put in there. And you guys got any questions about those, just leave them down in the comments. I, I can try to help you with those best I can. Cause we get four different type of seasons in Maine. So obviously the winter, our winter months, usually December to March are, are below freezing to around freezing. 
and then from April, May is spring, you know, we, temperatures get in the 40s and 50s. So a lot of times we have a lot of rain and then June, July, August is typically our summertime. So we get really high temperatures. It can go from 65 one day to 100 the next day, back down to 70 the next day. So a lot of big fluctuations there. And then September, October, November is our fall month. So, I mean, even October, we can have days in the 80s. And then they, you know, they start slowly going down from there November, in, uh, in November. Around Thanksgiving, things start changing around, start getting really cold. So a lot of big fluctuations, which means we have to deal with a lot of different type of uh, ways of knowing how to finish concrete in those, in those different types of weather. We were dealing with a little bit of wire. I said it earlier on some of the, on some of the video. A lot of the, the subgrade in this thing wasn't the greatest. It was up and down a little bit. Sometimes when you lay wire on top of the tubing, you know, sometimes that wire isn't perfectly flat, even though there's sheets of wire, five foot, five by ten foot sheets of wire. So, if uh, sometimes it'll actually stick right out after you screed it. Sometimes you can pound it back down, but sometimes you just gotta cut out a tiny little piece. It's usually in the corners that stick up. So if that's the case, you know, you just cut it out, push it back down, and keep moving. That's that's basically what we do is just keep moving. You can see how easy using that power screed. That's the that's the screed demon from MBW. We got that gas powered one, but we also got the battery powered one. And we you know we like both. We use more of the gasser when it when temperatures are real cold, because the concrete can start setting up on you pretty quick. And once the concrete starts stiffening up on you, the the, the gasser just seems to vibrate a little bit harder. Works a little bit better in those types of conditions. All right, two down, on to the last one. Going pretty good. We got some wire sticking up in spots. I mean, the subgrade is really out of level. Just not paying attention to detail when you're grading the dirt. So when you hire somebody to come in and do excavation, just it really pays to hire somebody good that knows what they're doing and takes their time, does a really good job. This was just hurried, thrown in there. Let's, let's beat the weather. And then, you know, they lay the styrofoam radiant heat on it without checking it. And then the guy wants wire. Well, the wire is all wavy and sticking up. There's a piece sticking up over there. There's another piece sticking up over there. Another piece sticking up over there. So, not, I mean, we'll cut it out when we go to finish. But, sheesh, it really shouldn't be sticking up if the floor isn't even four inches everywhere. Uh, we'll make do. It's not like we've never dealt with it before. But just, just letting you guys know, it, it pays to hire... An excavator that pays attention to detail doesn't hurry. Now, what about you guys that live in different parts of the country? Do you have to deal with uh, different types of weather like we do, like four seasons? And for us, uh, like each season is almost like three months, you know, some two, two and a half to three months for each season. Do you, do you have to uh, deal with concrete? being different for different seasons or do you think it's mostly the same no matter what season it is for you um, like most of the states most of the states in New England like Maine New Hampshire Vermont Massachusetts you know probably most of New York there I th I'd say it's probably mostly the same as what we do here in Maine but what about some of you other guys like out west or out in the northwest or down south, you know, southeast, or like down in Texas. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that the concrete mixes are really different in Texas than they are here in Maine. Or does it look, does it look like they're the same? I mean, I don't know. It'd be kind of interesting to know where, I know, I know like, you can get some freezing temps in Texas, maybe even some snow, but obviously not like us, not, and probably not as prolonged as us. Um, and then you can get some really extreme heat too. So just wondering if you guys have to deal with a lot of the same issues we do. Probably the toughest thing for us, one of the toughest things is when we pour concrete on a sub base that's really cold. Um, and not necessarily styrofoam, but if we have to pour on gravel or dirt or something that's really, really cold, that really can mess up the concrete as far as set times. It, it just sucks the heat right out of any any 
any heat you have in the concrete, it'll cool it off so fast that it makes setups really, really slow, setup times really, really slow. And sometimes that can cause problems if you have any wind at all, at least for us, it can cause blisters or bubbles on the surface that you got to deal with. And then, you know, you might get some delamination down the road, but it's a battle. Concrete's a battle, no matter what you think. So we're going to finish, we're going to finish this one last truck up right here. Alright, well that went in pretty easy actually for three guys, 60 by 30. The only thing, we'll just have to deal with the wire later on after the concrete sets up. So you can walk on it, you can go out there with some wire cutters and just cut those pieces out, push them down, they'll, they'll be alright, we'll get rid of them. It's going to be nice today for December, I mean, look at the sun coming up over there. It's supposed to be about 50, so beautiful day for porn in December in Maine, that's for sure. That's a that's a lot higher than our normal temperatures. But we got hot water today. We got quite a bit of accelerator in it. So we'll get this thing. She'll set up. Let's check it over here. Let's check the first truck. Nine yards. You know, compared to what the slump we ported at. Let's see. Yeah, nah, it's pretty soft. That's not setting up too much right now. It will, though. On top of that styrofoam, it'll set up pretty good. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.